Got Your Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products, using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. Happy Monday night to you folks and welcome to Got Your Back live stream edition. Ryan Rashog here, Jason Strudwick, Rob Brown, both standing by. You can hear Brownie loud breathing in the background. Like Brownie, back away from yeah, back away from the mic during the intro, but <laughs> it's not what we need. <laughs> well, fortunately, I don't think other people can hear that on the intro. I've well, just got your hear. mic isolated. Oh my goodness, just <sighs> Rob Brown in my ear during the intro. Wow. Can they hear him right now, Zuby? They can't even hear him. No, I don't think oh, they can hear awesome. me even. So you're just talking to your, you're on a solo. <laughs> they can't even hear you. So I'm this a, made no sense. This is your I'm intro. I'm having a conversation <laughs> nobody else can hear right now. Rob Brown ran up the stairs right before we got started and came down breathing so heavy in my ear just as I started my intro. Oh, it's going to be off the rails tonight, but why not? It's a non-game night. We are coming at you from our long shot studio here in Sherwood Park. Amazing golf, a fantastic sports bar experience. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z dot ca as always got your back proudly presented by our fabulous title sponsor sherwood buick gmc have you seen what they're up to this month since 2018 they have been named the number one volume gmc dealership in canada this month they're going to the moon they've set a goal they want to sell 400 cars it's a little insane but that's the way phil rolls sometimes that means they're going to be doing deals so if any listeners out there are thinking about uh, getting a new vehicle, getting a used vehicle, trading in, whatever you want to do. They are wheeling and dealing this month at Sherwood Buick GMC. Uh, visit them at 10 Auto Mall Road or check out their stock. GMCpod.com is the website. Okay, Zuby, let's make sure everybody can hear everybody now. Brownie, did you catch your breath yet, bud? You good? Need a little it sip was, of water? It was, it was a long run. It was like all the way up and then i had to turn and run all the way back down i'm exhausted it's been it's been a tough weekend shoggy it's been a really tough weekend and just after i was complimenting struds the other night on how good he looked he looks good right now yeah. but that that makes me rethink it if he could have run on his triceps it probably wouldn't be breathing so hard <laughs> oh, let's see if that's possible i'm just trying to think <laughs> the... it is not possible uh so struds you sent a note today that was a little bit jarring we're all going to uh, uh, the you can comedy nights uh, set to go. We're going to be there on Wednesday night. Fantastic uh, charity event for you can use services. Our awesome charitable partner. It's a comedy night. You sent me a note that you're going to be like hosting the night that we were supposed to go together or like, what's your, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe they didn't ask you two guys. You guys didn't get a call from. And I even offered. Weird. That's I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I'll be the host for one night. They've had, uh, you know, there's six nights total. They've had, uh, well, there'll be a, a number of different people hosting them. Uh, not obviously telling jokes. Uh, I don't want to steal the show, so I'll just introduce things and kind of keep it going. But uh, I'll be gentle with you two guys. Gentle touch. Are you, are you, are you going to be at our table at all during the night? Uh, yeah, I'll be, yeah, oh. yeah, I'll be, I'll be sitting down oh. with you guys. Yeah. So you're oh. the wise. Well, um, yeah. Okay. So really happy. We'll have we'll have some sports net uh, brethren there too. Jack Michaels uh, and yeah. wife, Louis DeBras, Gene Principe as well. And so I told the guys today. I said Struddy's hosting, and he's kind of saying, "Look, I'm I'm going to be coming at you guys a little bit, sort of bracing us for taking a little bit of a beating from you, Struds." And so I was talking to Louis about it today, and I said, "Look, Louis, you'll be ready. Struds is going to have a microphone, and he he might come at us." And Louie goes, remind him about our fight before you before he does anything. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he said you were going to say that. That's he said true. you were going to say that. It's so rookie, 10 games in the NHL, he jumps me. If you haven't, Brownie, have you ever seen the fight? Did you look at it when I sent it into the group chat today? We have a group chat. Oh, God. <laughs> but you need to get on board with this thing. It's been Enjoy. a really trying day for me. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, I did not see the fight. Um, I, if I would have had to guess, I would have guessed that Strides. I've never seen him lose, so I would have thought Strides would have kicked Louis's butt. So I'm shocked. Yeah. Shocked. No, he. 
Oh, you jump, so you jump me from behind. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> okay. He tells a dramatically different story. But what I think is interesting, Struds, is I sent that into the group chat. I said, hey, Struds, if you're going to get chirpy, Louie wanted me to remind you of this. Sent the fight in. Nothing. Zero response. <laughs> Ignored it completely. I spent the day thinking, I wonder if that pissed Struds off. Like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, like nothing, Struds. You didn't even respond. I don't need to. I, I, I've spot. spoken my piece. I've spoken my piece about what happened in that fight. Uh, it's quite dramatic. I, I, I played. I think I played 12 minutes in the NHL at that point. He just jumps me. He just said you. By standard. He said you went after him so hard. He oh, said you wanted a piece of him know. and gave him no choice. I wish that's, that's how he remembers. He's trying to make himself feel better. <laughs> uh, should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to the event uh, on Wednesday night. The comedy nights are going all through the week here. And uh, apparently it's going really, really well. Uh, in loving memory of our buddy Kyle Dubay, uh, thrilled to hear that the comedy nights are going so fantastic. Our You Can You Services Relentless player coming up a little bit later on. Uh, just laying out the pod real quick. Going to talk about what we saw at practice today. Uh, let's grade the West. Let's see where we think the Oilers rank uh, in the Western Conference, guys. We'll rate it kind of one through six, give or take a little bit there. Uh, we'll hear from Connor McDavid. I want to have a conversation about Vinny D'Arnais' contract situation. Struds, you made the call months ago that they need to get this guy signed. Well, he's taken on a bit of a bigger role here lately. What could that deal look like? We'll dig into that in takeaways. Struds with some highly important content in Struddy's World. Brownie, you're definitely going to want to stick around for that. Some hard-hitting <laughs> stuff today. I got a little bit of a preview of what it's going to be. Look out. And then, of course, uh, we'll take a lap and ask us anything as well. So loaded pod, ready to go tonight. Thanks for tuning in. And we got some good action here on the live stream as well. Let's get to breaking it down. Brought to you by Mr. Dirk, the iconic men's clothing store founded in 1939, just off White Avenue and 102nd Street. They have everything you need for every aspect of your wardrobe, casual clothes, jeans, pants, shirts, sweaters, whatever you need. And on the formal side, an amazing selection of brand name suits, sport coats, and ties as well. They can do customs. And they also have in-house tailoring. Going to go see Sterling this week. Rumor has it they've got some new Yope in, and that is my brand of preference. Really cool brand of uh, suits, so I'll be stopping by the shop this week. Visit MrDirk.com. Uh, gentlemen, main takeaway from practice today, Troy Stetcher skating next to Vincent Deharn, or, sorry, next to Darnell Nurse uh, on the blue line. Um, now, there was a lot of talk about a broken finger for Vinny D'Arnais. Uh, doesn't appear to be the case. Was handling the puck, shooting the puck, looked good. Um, not sure where that came from, uh, but he looked like he was okay. And, and you know, based on the way he looked today, it looks like he could probably play if he had to. But my sense is he's not going to play. And we're going to see Troy Stetcher potentially next to Darnell Nurse tomorrow night. Struds, what do you think? You come to a new team, the worst thing you have is not play. Because, you know, you're, you're just it, it, not anxiety, but it just goes day by day by day. And you're like, okay, I haven't played. Do I fit in here? And it's fun to practice, but you want to get immersed in the group and the way that they operate. So yeah, he's played one game, but you want him to get in there more often and, and feel like he can do it. So injury was the, probably the most likely way or sickness that we saw in Ekholm. So I like that he's getting in there and that he's going to get a chance to play and just get a little bit of a groove with this team. That being said, I think this is an opportunity to get the big guy in Broberg. I, I think they also have to find a way to punch him in a few games. Brownie. Well, I, I don't think you put Broberg in unless it's a lefty that goes out. So since it, if it's day or an eighth, you go with Stetcher. And I agree. Uh, going to a new team and then sitting in the press box, you don't feel part of the team. And and everyone could be welcoming and you could work and practice and go out for lunches with the guys and on the road, go out for dinners, but you don't feel like you're contributing. So it would be tough. And this is a guy, it's not as though they brought in a depth player who was a depth player elsewhere. He played 18 minutes a night. <laughs> when he was in Arizona. So it's yeah. like he, he played minutes. So to come sit in the, the press box would be tough. And then your first time playing in the game here for the Oilers, he played on the opposite side. And I don't think he would have been really excited with the way the game went for him. A couple penalties. Um, he just he didn't look like what I'd seen of him before. So I, I think he's going to be excited. I think you're going to see a much better player if he plays tomorrow than we did the first time he played for the Oilers. There's cap space issues too with getting getting Broberg up and getting him in. They still need to be careful. Um, there's still cap implications implications with each move they make. I would eyeball DeArnay, uh, maybe the Toronto game, maybe the Ottawa Senators game. But here's the question I have for you, Struds. What if Stature comes in and plays next to Darnell Nurse and just looks really solid and plays a hell of a good game? 
Well, that's what the Oilers want. Um, I, mm-hmm. I think you're asking, would they, would he get in there full time? So that means, well, he, can he, can he make a conversation out of it? Can he, can he crack the the window open even further? Like, is this just strictly fill in, or is is there a window here? I suggested oh, last man. pod that I I think it's cracked open for him. I'd have a, ah, it's a tough one. I, I think what it'd be would be more stylistic. So you get into a series and you feel you want a little bit more of what he brings, then yeah, you might do it. But I'd I'd have a hard time seeing them. Even if he plays incredibly well for him to take a spot out of those current six that have been there. I mean, CC's loved in this team. Vinny brings the penalty kill. Um, and obviously, you know, you've got uh, the big guy, uh, Bouchard. So I, I don't know. I just don't see a spot for him, Brownie, unless it's very specific and detailed in the playoff series. Yeah, I agree. I think, but every time he steps in the lineup is an audition for him. And that if someone has an off night, then all of a sudden you're like, well, we saw what, what Troy did last game. And he was, he was quite good. CC had an off night or so-and-so had an off night. Maybe we give him another chance. So it will be an audition. He will want to show well. And I, I don't know. I don't believe it would be Day or Nay's spot that he would take. Simply, they're just too different a player. And they bring, as, as Strutty said, they just bring different styles. But uh, if, if Cody CC struggles or, or something along that line, well, we saw what he did when he played with Nurse. Maybe we can put him back in there. So it's an audition. He's going to want to show well. I don't think he's going to take Vinny's spot. Having said all of that, I know if you're a bottom six forward or if you're a five, six, seven defenseman, you never want someone taking your spot in a game. You do not want to miss a game from illness. Or you do not want to miss a game for injury because if they go in and show, well, you're sitting in that press box. There's nothing you can do in the press box to impress, but that guy's got 60 minutes to impress on the ice. A couple comments off the Weiss Johnson YouTube stream here. Petters Pancake says, if... If Stetcher gels well, he could be a replacement for CC next year. So if the orders need to move money, uh, getting that DRNA deal done, uh, maybe CC's money is on the way out. Stetcher could give them an option if, if he looks like he gels well. Uh, the Grumpy Scotsman says, now isn't the time to experiment if you don't have to. Um, Okay, we're going to talk about Vinny D'Arne and the contract uh, coming up in our next segment. So we'll look at some comps and uh, ballpark what it could potentially look like. Feel free to send in your uh, suggestions, and Chris will track some of those. want to talk about what I saw at practice today. I showed up a little bit early today. So, too, did Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. First two skaters on the ice today. Leon was working on some of his uh, driving in from the blue line, taking snapshots uh, over and over and over. Uh, McDavid did some work with the goaltending, uh, with the goaltending coach and with the goaltender working on his shot as well. Uh, notable to me that they're the first two on the ice. Uh, and today, guys, I liked what I saw at practice, man. It was a crisp practice. Guys were flying. Uh, lots of good energy out there. Lots of, you know, having some laughs. Um, this is the second time that, you know, uh, in the last maybe week and a half or so, I was on the trade deadline trip where it was notable energy to me at, at practice. And I think it's good strats. I think teams need to practice well uh, to be able to keep their level high. And the Oilers, to me, look like a team that is practicing well for whatever that's worth. And we're talking about practice here. Well, it's going to go uh, by the way, side because they don't have a lot of practice days, you know, once they really get into, especially April. You know, April, 10 games in 18 days, I think it is, or something like that. It's There's going to be very few practices with a couple of back-to-backs in there. So now's the time to try to tweak things because after this, you basically have to tweak them on the fly, that being the video room. So it's great to hear that. You, you want to have that energy. They should be feeling good about themselves. They're playing well. Um, you know, individual players are having some nice moments. You know, you know, look at Fogel and these types of guys are playing well, Skinner. So I think that, you know, having that energy and bring that energy to the room is really important, Brownie. Well, it is. And I think that two things why is the team is playing well. So mm-hmm. when you're playing well, you're happy, you're excited, you're not, you don't mind going out on the ice early because you're, you're enjoying yourself. And two, for me, anytime you get into the teens of games left, there's a special excitement because now you're getting closer to the more important games. So I just think right now the team's playing well and they can see the the playoff stretch coming up and they can see the playoffs just around the corner. So for those two reasons, I can see the excitement on the ice right now. This is the best time of year for hockey players when they know that the playoffs are coming up pretty quickly. Brownie, if I ask you a question, will you will you promise to answer it honestly for us? Like, will, always, will, you, always, will you bury uh, yeah. your soul and, and look in the mirror and give us an honest answer? I don't need to look in the mirror. I'm looking at you right now, and you okay. look trustworthy, and I, I want to tell you the truth. You'll tell like me it. the truth. Okay. How much time did you spend 
putting in extra time at practice before or after through the different stages of your career? How do you reflect on the time that you put in and maybe how you learned about that throughout your career? What would you say? Um, the beginning of my career probably wasn't great at it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the middle of my career, uh, I was uh, sometimes was told by the coaching staff to put a little more effort into practice before or after. At the end of my career, I was much more appreciative yeah. of being back in the NHL. And at that point, I did it on my own. I'd be out there early and I'd be out there late. I probably should have taken more of a hands-on approach to my uh, my work ethic earlier in my career. Hockey was easy for me. <laughs> Seriously, junior was easy. But and I went was to the full good though. You were it was, stupid good in junior, and it it did come not easy, but that's got to get in your head. Like, what did you need it did, to do for? It did. Well, then, so then good. I well then I had twenty four goals my rookie year and only played fifty games. I had forty nine in my second. I'm like. Wow, this is, this easy. is easy. Oh my goodness, I'm going to start counting the trophies I'm going to win. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so I, I, but I mean, when, when I broke into the league though, guys went to training camp to get into shape. Like Mario's first time on skates was the first day of training camp. Yeah. You didn't have, <laughs> you, you didn't work out in the summer like they do now. Later in my career, but I went, at the end of my career, I was much more of appreciative of being in the National Hockey League. Struds, your journey? I always did it, and that's not to make Ronnie look bad, although it probably is. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know what? I I was in the minors. I had a really good uh, coach. My, I think it was my second year. Oh, I had co pretty good coach all along, but, um, you know, Vasily Tikhanov. It was uh, Victor Tikhanov's son, actually. And uh, he pulled me aside, and we, we'd work before and after practice every day, every single day. And I, it just became a habit. And honestly, it got to the point where I realized, like, that's my time. So I'd work on things that were needed, um, that, you know, and and – didn't always show up. You know, I worked on my shot a lot, but I, I think I it didn't really change anything. But um, <laughs> but you know, at least maybe it didn't get worse. But I I really like that time and I like that quiet time. I especially loved going on early and it was just me on the ice or staying out late and it was just you. Like I, I really like that um kind of quiet time. So yeah, that's that's when I got her done. I asked Connor McDavid about the practice habits that his team has been displaying. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want losses to to start to roll into the next game. Um, it's important that you get back at it, and and I think it starts in practice. It really does. Um, you know, I thought, um, you know, as you said, we've done a good job of, of you know working in practice when when our game is where it needs to be and working our way out of it. And um, I thought today, not to say that our game is in a bad place, but you know, I thought today was good practice. If I'm going to be the guy that points out when they have a shitty morning skate, and I have been that guy before because it was awful that day, uh, it's also been notable to, notable to me a couple of times. I like the energy. I like what I'm seeing. I think that's what uh, a winning team's practice mm -hmm. habits should look like, and you see the biggest, most important guns on the team that are leading the way. Uh, that clip coming to you from our Reese Johnson sound box. Furnace and duct cleaning is an important part of any home comfort system. The clean... Uh, the cleaner your furnace and ducks are, the cleaner your air that you are breathing. Add a call to Weiss Johnson to your spring cleaning list or get in touch with them at Weiss-Johnson.com. Jingle. Ruby, staying with me on that one. Well done. I have to say a couple hellos here on the stream. Sherry Frazzy, one of our favorites on the live stream, chimed in a little bit late, said she is finally here. Uh, so, uh, Sherry, welcome. And Wayne Watson, big fan of the pod and a friend of ours involved in Kinprint, uh, who spent two weeks poolside and golfing, is finally back uh, to the land of the living. He's uh, joining us as well. So, Wayne, thank you. And then, Zuby, we got a new addition here. I see uh, Rashog's thinning hairline is a oh. handle that somebody has chosen. <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to investigate that because of, of course last week there was Stretty's five head, and it this looks very similar to me, and it's sort of so I have a feeling it's a it's changing. I think it's the same uh, fella or gal um, coming in to, to chirp a little bit, and but the name has changed from Stretty's five head to Rich. That's just a working theory I've got right now. Okay, well his latest contribution is I bet Ryan wears Brown's blazer jersey to bed each night, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where it went. Holly yeah. said it's not in the closet anymore. <laughs> yeah. It just I just sleep better. I just feel, you know, I feel comforted by that. Oh, he uh, says it's not him. Says it's not him on the stream chimed in. So Okay. Anyway, it's nice that people are going at you guys equally. Oh, for sure. 
Why not? Uh, we're all fair game. Uh, guys, I want to handicap the West one through six seed wise. Like, where are the orders? We just saw them mm -hmm. go toe to toe with the Avalanche. Um, you know, there are a lot of really good teams. The West is, it is, it is tough this year. And some Canadian teams in the mix as well. So I've got my six. Mm -hmm. uh, Spreads, you want to go first? You want to take the first leap? Brownie, I know you don't have any notes or anything. No, oh, I do. Actually, I wrote it while I was sitting here. Well, oh, oh, yeah, well, you, yeah, well, oh, you were talking. You go first, then. You go first, because I'm sure it's on the back of a cocktail napkin from uh, Brown Social Hall. From last night. No, it, I was at Dicey's last night. Where, yeah, you're, you're moving a little slow today, aren't you, bud? You big. It's It was the green beer got me yesterday, and then the whiskey <laughs> shots. I, whenever you go out with Bubba, it's a long, long Bubsy. night. Yep, 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 Bubba. Yep. Martin, he's Martin Motorsports. That's where Bubs works. Um, yeah. I've got uh, my T. It's on. It's on like a sheet of paper and everything. Okay, oh wow! It. it says yeah. Jack Campbell. So, I saw on that. Yeah. Well, that was from one of our Zuby webcam or whatever the name of that show is that we did. Um, I got the number one seed right now. The Avs is a one A, as and the Av the Oilers is one B. I think they're both. They're very very tight. I think the Avs have the slight edges. They've got a Stanley Cup under their belt. Then my next three are very, very close. I have the Jets as number three. I got the Stars as number four. And I got the Canucks as number five. I just give the, They're all tight, but I just give the Jets the edge because their goaltender is the best in the league right now. I think Hellebuck's having... Uh, I think he's going to win the Vezina. Mm -hmm. And then my number six team is the Nashville Predators. Ooh, over Vegas. Very good. They're 12-0-2 well, the in their last 14 and games. Better lately. Yeah, Vegas. Vegas might not make the playoffs. I mean, if Vegas gets healthy, and they get Hurdle back, and they get Stone back, well, I'll, I'll change. But right now, the Nashville Predators are the hottest team in the National Hockey League. Struds. So that's who you have. Okay, interesting. But mine are very similar. So I had the Jets number one because Ooh. I believe in their goaltending more than I believe in the Avs. I've got the Oilers right underneath them as well, similar, and I, I have them kind of separate. Um, and then I have. Uh, sorry, no, I had the Jets and then the Avs and Oilers tied because I think they're very similar. You I think guys in your ties. Take a yeah. stand. Put one before yeah, the other I one. I am taking a stand. I said one, one, two. Okay, if you're going to make me do it, I'll do Jets, Avs, Oilers. Okay. And then I got Stars, and then it drops off after that. And I'm going to put the Canucks. Um, I guess that makes them five. I've got Vegas, six, and I've got the Kings. Uh, I guess you don't need that. Kings, seven. I don't even have Kings the Preds in there. Yeah, yeah you're so overachieved. Sweet. You did more than you needed to do. Yeah. That's interesting. So, and and Winnipeg's changes at the deadline. I mean, w the combination of that goaltending and then loading up the way they did struts. I don't blame you at all. I have Colorado first, but Brownie, I mean, that Winnipeg team is really mm -hmm. something right now. Well, they are. I mean, to Foley, they, they got goal scoring now. They they have the best goalie in the league right now. Yeah. Hallenbuck has been outstanding all season long. And we saw a couple of years ago in the regular season, the Oilers, dominated the Winnipeg Jets. They go into the playoffs four straight. And it was all on the goaltending of Helen Buck. So he's good. They picked up some goal scoring at the at the deadline. They are a good hockey club. It is it this is why I want to I wish the, the NHL go one eight, two seven, all that in the playoffs. Because yeah. a really, really good team in the right. what is it, the central or whatever. Central, yeah. yeah. One of those teams is going to be gone in the first round and it's yeah. not fair. It's just That's not sad. fair. Oilers came close the other night, came close to beating the Avs. Five straight games that have gone to overtime. Colorado's obviously had their number. Connor McDavid asked today, like, what does it take to get over to the hump with this team? Because they are still in the chase position, as as Speck had put it today in his question to McDavid. Here he is. You got to beat them. Obviously, that's the only way. Um, you know, they've, they've uh, like you said, it's been tight checking games. They've been close games, you know, five consecutive overtime games. If you look back at the playoff series, they win, you know, it's a, it's a sweep and they go on to win the cup. You know, if you want to be considered better than them, you got to beat them. That's just the way it is. So hopefully we get that opportunity. I am so happy the Oilers have two regular season games left again. The avalanche that, that just gives that gives you something to look forward to down the stretch it gives them reason to keep their game at a high level uh guys i asked you for a prediction the orders with 17 games left struds uh no offense i'm not gonna let you go first on this one because you were hot garbage the last time we had to make these predictions uh, you're good in a lot you, like you kill it in so many things but on this mm. one in goaltending mm. i'm gonna let you take back seat brownie what do you got 17 games uh, I got them going 11, 4, and 2. Okay. Okay. So 13 out of 17. Or no, you've got 11, 4, and 2. Okay, so just 11 wins out of 17? Yeah, and four losses and two overtime losses. Two overtime losses. Okay. 
Uh, Struddy, what do you think? Well, a couple of comments. Number one, I think what the words Conor McDavid was looking for is from the great Ric Flair. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. I think that would have been a better thing for him to say that. <laughs> and also, you never gave us your top six. You gave us your top oh. one, Shogger. Not, oh. not to be a stickler to the this, no, no. this rule Thanks. book here, but I'm interested. <laughs> Okay, thank, I, I looked at our time, and we're getting a little long in this okay, first well, segment, rip it so out. I moved it along. Okay, uh, Colorado, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Dallas, Vancouver, Vegas. I'm going to give Vegas oh, yeah. the edge over Nashville okay. just because I think they got the the higher-end players and if they get healthy. So very almost exactly the same to Rob Brown. Go ahead, Struts. 10-5-2. and two. I think that uh, some of those back-to-backs and busy schedule in April will we'll catch up with them. Fatigue, not bad play, fatigue. I went through it. So there's nine games that they probably should win. Uh, based on the opponent. I'm going to give them seven of those. And then eight games that they very well could win, but stiffer opponents. I'm going to give them five of those. So I, I, I've i got um, 13. And what did I do? Sorry. I lost that would be 12. Five. Seven 12. plus five is 12. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there you go. I got them uh, at 12 wins the rest of the way. I mean. So that's, that's the same amount of points as I had. You yeah. have the same 24 12. points. Oh, I just God. didn't break. I just didn't put ties and stuff in there and, and all of that. But right. details. Um, Don't worry about them. Yeah, the small details. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's get to our relentless player of the night, Stretty. Brought to you by You Can Youth Services, uh, an Edmonton charity that is relentless in helping youth age 16 to 24 get out of harm's way and get employment. Visit youcan.ca to see how your donation can change lives right here in our community. I'm going Off back to, to the team struts. Yeah, go ahead. So no, I'm going back to Saturday for this one. And I'm going with a, a gentleman, a goalie from the number two pro league in Russia, the VHL. He's undrafted. And in a playoff game, 21-year-old Artemi Pleshkov made 124 saves in the team's one nothing quintuple <laughs> overtime <laughs> defeat. And that's the worst part. His lost. team lost. Art again, I got the name correct. Artemi Pleshkov. 21 years old and a loss, 124 saves. So I believe that's a new record. That is the new um, all-time world record for saves in the game, Artemi Pleshkov in the VHL. It seriously, you, how, how mad are you at your teammates? Like, seriously, no. how mad are you at your no. teammates? You, you lose one nothing. So he, it means he had 125 shots and 124 he saved. That's impressive. <laughs> Strutty, do you know what the, what the other team's shots were? Do you know what the differential was? Um, I, you know what? I, I'm guessing it was quite a shot-filled evening, but uh, I can tell you how big he is. He's uh, five ten. <laughs> like I just, I'm wondering if it wasn't even close. If the shots were like one twenty-four to, to eighteen. I, I he did a really good job researching this, and you I just loved threw it. him on the yeah. spot and right under the bus. And look at the guy; he's fumbling around it. now. Yeah. So. Apparently, the, the, the other previous records were uh, Alexander Borodula, who had 107 saves in a Belarusian extra league game, which I probably would have done pretty well then. But, uh, anyways, I don't know how many shots the other team had. Let's say you had 100, 101. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. It. That was the relentless player of the night brought to you by You Can Use Services. Struds, I appreciate the extra effort you put in. Like, you're a guy that shows up early. Works on those weak spots. You know, you've got research done. You've got a computer in front of you. You got paper, yeah. brownie. Yeah. yeah. Any laptop in front of you? Any paper? Any research for tonight? Any anything at all? Or are you just showing up thinking, you know, all I got to do is sit down and put my hat backwards? I don't know what you're going to ask me. What am I supposed to research? <laughs> anything and everything. It's like going on Jeopardy. You got to be ready for everything. He oh, is pretty I, good. I, I, when I go on Jeopardy, though, you, there's they, they have the replay of the show, so sometimes I watch the show and then go to my mom's house and answer all the questions. She's like, oh, my God, you're smart. And that's because I watched it a half an hour earlier at my house. Uh, you got to be like Artemi Pleshkov. Be ready yeah. for everything. <laughs> Relentless. Relentless in your pursuit of excellence <laughs> here on the pod. Let's dive into Vinny Darinay and the contract coming up next. The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0, stay smooth, gentlemen. It's 
Time now for our takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health, not just a chiropractor's office. Redefined Health offers so much more from naturopathic medicine, acupuncture, massage therapy, orthotics, custom rehab programs, even on-site psychology. Redefined Health truly believes in overall health. Let them help you get healthy, stay healthy, perform better, and reach your potential. Visit redefinedhealth.com. They're also good at helping your knee which they did for me. Thanks again to Dr. Tyler. <laughs> uh, guys, Vinny Darnay on the contract. I spent a little time on the phone today uh, with Hart Levine, our good buddy over at uh, at Pockpedia. Uh, just t- looking for comps, right? You, you look for previous deals that were done. And in fairness to Hart, I, I caught him. Uh, he's a new dad in the middle of changing diapers and he was busy in this and that. So we only chatted for a few minutes, but just try to narrow this thing down a little bit. Um, I'll put my case out there and then we can sort of dissect it or or discuss it or people on the stream can bludgeon me with disagreements. But I think this is going to be two plus million dollars per season. Uh, When you look at the comps and look at who else has done deals here recently and Struds, I think to your point, had they maybe gotten to this a little bit earlier on, I don't know that we'd be talking this way, but I think if they're willing to give them term in the three to four year range to try and buy the dollar figure down a little bit, you know, and I'm ballparking here. I see this being, you know, two two to two four somewhere in that range, um, based on some deals that have been done previously here. Uh, what is your immediate reaction when I say that number, Struddy? I'm not surprised at all. I think that he's working his way up, and, I, and this is a big jump. But like a guy like Cabranson, um, you know, I think he's at. I want to say he's at four million. I think I looked at it. I might be wrong. But, you know, Cabranson, I'm not saying he's Cabranson, but he grants is big, he's heavy, he kills penalties. So is he, would you take Vinny at half that? I think you would. I think you would make that deal if, if you're a, a team in free agency. So I think, I honestly think that if I was Vinny Darren A, I'm going to say, guys, I want somewhere around like 2.4 to 2.7. And, you know, and then if not, I'll go to free agents, I'll try it out. And, and I bet you if it's Ken Holland or whatever, I'll say, okay, go out and try it. If you don't get it, then you can come back. But... I, and I and honestly, I think you have to look at him and say, what do you want as an absolute number? Like, what? how many million do you want? And let's try to backtrack that over the years and over over the amount per year. So I, I bet you he gets close to, if it's a four-year deal, I bet you it's between nine and 10, guys. You know, it's funny, Struts. You're 100% right. If they would have done this in November or December, they'd probably get it done, a two-year deal at $3 million, 1.5 a year. Yeah. But he, he's he's played well. He's become a very, very important part of a good penalty killing unit. He's got size. Um, I It's one of those things that they're going to have to find what Vinny wants and give it to him. But Because Vin, this is this is a big contract for Vinny. And he can be an unrestricted free agent this summer. There's not a lot of six foot seven mean defensemen out there that, <laughs> you, get, that you can go after. So, I mean, if to me... I agree with you. I don't. I don't know much about contracts and what people are worth, but I do know that there will be a number of suitors for a player that plays the way oh, yeah. Vinny Dearnay play, plays. So he's going to find a number in his head. Well, his agent will put a number in his head, and then the Holland's going to have to match it, or whoever's the general manager of the Edmontons will have to match it, or he goes to free agency. He will get more at free agency than the Oilers will want to offer. To the chat here, Chris Rombo says two times 1.8 for Vinny. No millions involved with Vinny. All snaps, says Taves to Kane, thinking he'd be under a million bucks. That's absolutely asinine. Respectfully, no chance, Lance, that he'll be that. Um, Yeah, Uh, what else do we got here? Two times 1.8 sounds good to me. Um, Discount for being the team that brought him up in the league, says Chris Rombos. All right, here is the case. Nick Sealer. Just did a deal. So he was playing 1658. He's 30 years old. Four times 2.7 million is the deal that Sealer just did. Now he's got four full seasons in the league, close to 300 games. Uh, he's prolific at blocking shots, uh, leading the league among defensemen when I when I took a look earlier on. 184 blocks already. You know, similar offensive numbers, a goal, 11 assists for 12 points. Uh Analytics are similar, around 51% Corsi 4. Um, Average is 206 a night on the penalty kill, about 39% of his team's overall penalty kill time. Vinny Darnay is younger, three years younger. Similar points, nine points, 
not as many minutes. He's 15, 19 a night, and he's got his 96 block shots. But again, big part of the penalty kill, about 38% of his team's overall penalty killing time, he's out there on the ice. So I would suggest that Sealer, due to experience, uh, probably is a little bit on the higher end. And he got a real solid, you know, long deal at four years. So at 2.7, I would say, you know, you could suggest maybe that's a little bit the higher end. Then you look at um, Hockenpah, 31, three years at 4.5 million. That was 1.5 million a year. He had only played 62 games at the time he did that deal. And remember with Vinny, he's at 99, right? So it's, it's rare to be a UFA with this few of games played. Well, when Hockenpah did his deal a couple of years ago, uh, he was similar. It only played 62 games, a few more minutes. Um, he's at 1839 right now, making about uh, 1.5. But the cap, the cap has gone up in that time. And, uh, you know, the market for right shot, big physical defenseman is a little bit different now than it was then. So I would say he'd be a guy the Oilers would want to look at in Hockenpah, Sealer, and you could even, you know, you could even throw Carson Soucy in there. That would be the higher end, right? Because of experience, he was three and a quarter, the very higher end. But if 2.7 and the 1.5 are kind of the, you know, when you start talking about meeting somewhere in the middle, it's that sweet spot in the 2.2, 2.3 range, Struds. What do you think about those comps that I've mentioned here, Struddy? I like it, and I would still throw Gabranson in there. Like, I, I think that he's he's a big guy, and he's at four million, so that's way yeah. above. Like, that's, that's a really high number. Yeah, they gave him so much money, and they, he they did. He, he's got way more experience, been in the league for way longer. I, I hear you, but your point about would you take him at half price, I think, is a good reference point. And that's a huge thing because Vinny says I, I'm I'm pretty damn close to that guy, even if I'm. 30% different. You're going to give, pay me $2 million for that? Like, I think people are looking around at that. So I, honestly, guys, I, I'd be surprised if this doesn't start with a two. And the biggest thing too, Struds, is he's 27. There's a right. big, uh, so when he, if he gets a four-year deal, he's finishing at 31. He's not finishing at 34, 35. Yeah. So he's right, right now coming in, I mean, to his peak years. I mean, there's not going to be a drop-off like there is when a defenseman gets 33, 34, especially a also, bigger man. So I think the age is a huge advantage for, for Deherney in this one because he's coming in at a at an age where he's just going to get better for the rest his contract he should get better each year during his contract those other guys won't they will actually have a little bit of a tail off as they get older so you buy it like let's say and I don't I I don't know what's happening in the negotiation I'm sure there have been conversations it'd be nuts for there not to have been at this point so you know I believe there probably have been um but let's say that Deherney's camp is you know whatever they use Sealer and they or Susie and they say 2.7, 2.9, 3, whatever. And the oil are closer to Hawk and Paw, and it becomes about term now, Struds. How comfortable are you giving DRNA four years to try and buy that annual value down a little bit? Like Brownie just made the point that he's going to be improving here, but how do you feel about a four year deal for a guy like Vinny DRNA that plays that way at that dollar figure? Well, he'd be. Yeah, he'd be 28, 29, 30, 31 playing at that time. Fourth year would be a tough, that'd be a bit of a tough one. But I do believe this. I believe that Vinny has had an incredible summer of training last year. And I'd love to see another summer like that. And it's not so much getting in shape. It's just the work away from the from the gym and in on the ice, actually, with his trainer. I mean, he, can he improve even another 5%? And what does that look like? Um, so... Man, that I, I would probably for four years, I would probably do it because again, this isn't a five million dollar deal that you have to eat a ton of it, right? If it doesn't work out in year four, you can stuff it in the minors. But I just don't see Vinny coming up as a guy that isn't able to play that out all the way, Brownie. Well, and, and let's look at it this way, too. I think we all believe the Oilers have a very good hockey club and they are capable of going all the way to the Stanley Cup finals. I think we all agree with that. A little bit of luck, some bounces here, but they are good enough. So Vinny DeHarnay plays with Darnell Nurse on a team that goes to the finals or win a Stanley Cup. How much oh. does that drive up his price? Oh, it's, All of a sudden, he's, he's in the top four on a team that wins the Stanley Cup. Now, yeah. now, yeah. now, his two might yeah. be really low. He's so, gone. He, yeah, I mean, if he's going happens, to get it. One hundred percent. So those are things you're. Gonna, we're talking about a contract now. It's funny. We could have talked about a contract in November. It'd be one point five. We're talking about a contract right now, and Strides is saying starts with a two. If the Oilers go on and win a Stanley Cup or go to the finals and Vinny's in your top four the entire way, well, all of a sudden you're you're talking a much, much bigger number with a lot of teams wanting to have not only a six foot seven mean defenseman, but one that just won a championship 
or showed he's capable of playing on a team that can go all the way. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I think if you're willing to go four years and you can get him in the 2-2 two, two to 2-3-4 two, range somewhere in there, I think you probably have to consider that. And it likely means a change next season, guys. They'll have to swap somebody out on the blue line. So whether that ends up being CC, whether that ends up being Kulak, I think there's going to be a different configuration next season based on where this contract with DRNA potentially goes. We will have to wait and see. It'll be interesting to hear if uh, there's any news on this contract negotiation, if the Oilers choose to get him done ahead of the playoffs. Because if he's going to play some big minutes, uh, that price tag is only going up. All right, we'll remind you that Rob Brown's appearances on the podcast are brought to you by our good friends over at Kinprint, a local company, family-owned with decades of experience filling any and all of your promotional apparel and embroidery needs. Visit kinprint.ca. As we go to break, uh, the second installment of our In the System segment, Ryan Reed uh, is a young journalism student at Grant McEwen, also interns down at the rink. He's often up in the press box. Uh, great kid awesome keener and i've uh, asked him to keep track of what's going on in the american hockey league and with some oiler prospects and uh thrilled to have him uh delivering this segment for us so ryan reed goes in the system the bakersfield condors have been playing well winning five of their last six games they sit fifth in the pacific division and are continuing their late season playoff push with 16 games remaining Offensively, Seth Griffith leads the way with 48 points in 53 games. Jack Campbell has stopped 124 of his last 126 shots during a personal four-game winning streak with a shutout win against Ontario on Saturday. Campbell ranks sixth in the AHL with a 9.20 save percentage. Olivia Rodrigue is tenth with a 9.18 save percentage. Since returning from injury, Philip Roberg has recorded points in four of seven games, including a goal against the Abbotsford Canucks on the 12th. Broberg has two goals and 21 assists in 36 games. Raphael Lavoie has 24 goals and 16 assists for 40 points in 51 games played this season. Lavoie is heading towards career highs in points and goals. Dylan Holloway has four points in four games since starting his latest stint with the Condors on March 8th. Holloway scored the game-winning goal on Saturday in a game that the Condors eventually won 4-0 over the Ontario Reign. My name is Ryan Reed, and that is what's happening in the system. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top-of-the-line TrackMan simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full-service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z dot C-A. Winter is upon us, so why not make the best of it? Marmot Basin Ski Resort is where it's at. Ski half price every day, no blackout periods. Pick up your escape card for 99 bucks and make winter fun more affordable. Half the price, all the powder. Get yours at www.skimarmot.com. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. <laughs> <laughs> time now for your monday night edition of strutty's world brought to you by shipwreck rum the brindley family has been handcrafting their rum on the caribbean island of saint kitts for decades their shipwreck vanilla is blended with natural madagascar vanilla which gives it an incredible smoothness I dove into the vanilla the other night. Oh, is it on a bunch of ice? Fantastic. Take one sip, you'll agree. Truly is vacation in a bottle. Get Shipwreck fans available at your local liquor retailer. And as always, they ask, we ask that you enjoy responsibly. Struds, give the people in Brownie what they need. I got a tip the other day about a local fast food restaurant at changing some of their menu. And I... I'll tell you what, it shocked me right down to my core. I've been eating at this place for years, probably 20, 30 
maybe 35 years. So I did a little, what they call investigative journalism. I went to uh, two locations. No, you didn't. Oh, I checked it out and I requested exactly what I'd always wanted. And both places said they don't have it. They did offer me packets. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. Subway food no longer has French's mustard in the bottle. It is outrageous. This is what happened. Imagine if I went to Dairy Queen, they took Smarties out of their order. Or if the Big Mac also took out their secret dressing out of the Big Mac, or if I went to Ruth Chris Steakhouse, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, and they took away their uh, steak sauce, or if I went to uh, Circle K and they took out Mountain Dew from the slurping machine, you don't do it. You do not change something that's been a staple in your place for a thousand years. The customer is always right. Who makes a sandwich? without yellow mustard. There's not a man, woman, child on the planet that has ever put together a sandwich and doesn't at least have that as an option on the side. So to Subway, I say, I'm disappointed. I'm still a customer. In fact, I went there tonight, but I'm disappointed. <laughs> and I might have to bring my own mustard. I, yeah, I hate mustard. I absolutely oh detest God. mustard. And I go to oh. Subway, I get the Subway melt, no vegetables, just what? mayonnaise. Subway no, melt. you don't. I do 100% every time. And there's one right by 630 Chad. So I go there sometimes when we have the other games at Chad. So it's the Subway melts, no veggies, and mayonnaise. Who it's, goes and toasted. to Subway and make no yeah. veggies? No None. veggies. Nothing. None, zero. Nothing. That explains Not a zero. single one. That just the Subway melt. Like that explains some things. <laughs> it's, it, it just, I, I, I know what I like. Vegetables isn't one of them. Yeah. And I don't want to. I don't want to fill myself up on something that I don't like. I do. Right. I do like the cheddar. I like the bacon. I like the turkey. I like the ham. Love the bread. Don't like veggies. I uh, I asked the Google machine, and the Google machine says, "Why is why is Subway discontinuing mustard?" A message reportedly sent out to Canadian Subway franchise owners, posted several weeks ago on Reddit, says the decision was made because yellow mustard has seen declining demand in mm -hmm. Canada and become a slow-moving product. Yeah, I believe that. According to Google, Struds. Yeah, I saw that as well. But doesn't mean it's right. There's some loyal <laughs> customers. And now if you really want to get into it, I've been ordering a spicy Italian sub since I was 16 years old, and they just took that off the menu. Luckily, there's still some old-timers that know what that is. I was a pretty upset when they changed the way they cut the buns. I got over that. I was upset when they took the spicy Italian off the menu. Now you're doing this? How much more can the guy yeah. take? They How are messing more? around quite a bit. What's your fallback then? If it's not Subway Struts, what is it? I just don't get it. I, I'll make one at home. I can make an unbelievable sandwich at home. I, like, I go to the Italian Center. I love that place. And I get the right cheese. I get the right buns. You know, I'll even bring the pickles home. Oh, man. So I might have to go to that because I, why, I'm going to go get something I don't want. That's like going to get a, a Sunday, a chocolate Sunday, and they don't have any fudge. Like, what, why bother? Botak Bazar says uh, mustard and scorpion Tabasco mixed is outstanding. Mustard Ooh. and scorpion Tabasco. Uh, Saber Cove says, Brown, you're failing me tonight, brother. You need veggies. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you not order veggies, but also like going there and order a Subway melt is like going yeah. to a Japanese restaurant and ordering a crepe. Like it just doesn't make sense. There's, there's no what sense. What are you talking? A Subway melt? It's got bacon, cheese, ham. A uh, turkey? Like, what do you mean? A crepe at a Japanese place? It's a sandwich place. I got a turkey oh, bacon no. ham sandwich. I, I, it shouldn't be warmed up. I don't believe sandwich should be warmed up. Oh, you got to toast it. You don't get your Subway oh, toasted? Oh, no, never. No, I, 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 no. Oh, my good God. There, there's a lot of things going to Subway, right? I love Subway. I'll continue to go, but I won't always like it. Hey, Str Chris Strutty. Ramos. Oh, yep. Strutty, yes. do you ever ask them for the old cut? For a while, anyway, you could ask for the U cut yeah. on the bun, or is there all the people who used to be able to yep. do that no longer there? The old timers are gone. I call them the old timers, the sandwich the old artists. Ways. It, it, it's, it's like asking someone for where, where's Obi Wan Kenobi? I haven't heard that name in many mm. years. I know I don't go by it anymore. Like, it's crazy. It's just. <laughs> I, I, I missed that reference. I did. What are you talking about? Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's too much it. to explain. That's don't worry about it. It'd be the same thing. Uh, my go to is a veggie, a foot long veggie on flatbread, um, lettuce, green pepper, green peppers, pickles, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, uh, banana peppers. A little bit of light mayo, pepper only, and then barbecue sauce. Ooh, <laughs> see that that would I'd struggle with that one because I would just get a piece of bread. Yeah, that's I know. Not, that without veggies it would be. But why have the car carbs? Why not just have the veggies? Like if you're not getting meat on a sandwich, it's not really a meat. It's not a sandwich. 
I have meat on my sandwich. No, I know. Are you talking about giving me shit? Okay, let's give it to Shoggy. Yeah, let's give it to him now. Yeah, I don't have. I like the veggie. I like the veggie. So basically, oh, you know what we should do, Shoggy? We should go together, order one. Yeah, and I'll give you all the veggies. You give me all the meat. You guys would. I, I don't understand. I can't understand. Like, getting, like, oh my God, just have the Shrubs. veggies. Get the calories out of the bread. Some of us have a different level of commitment to our physical fitness. And so yeah. I'm committed yeah. to the veggie sub, even when I'm indulging at Subway, bud. I don't go all crazy with whatever your spicy Italian mayhem with all that MSG and yeah, cholesterol. You're... No, not me. Not in this body. <laughs> <laughs> all right that was strutty's world brought to you by shipwreck rum brownie thank you my friend it was uh, i enjoyed this time together bud i do i really enjoy seeing you i'm gonna go upstairs and have a piece of cake and some ice cream that's what i'm gonna do right now <laughs> it's my daughter's birthday, birthday. I it's my daughter's right. birthday oh, okay well happy birthday, happy birthday to oh, the twins happy happy thank birthday. you very much i appreciate that maybe yeah, i'll have two pieces your son. He chooses me too much. Oh, actually, so Shaggy, quick one. My, my my son called me today while I was on the ice with Struds. And I go, hey, buddy, I only got a minute. I'm on the ice right now teaching with Struds. He goes, sure hope you guys aren't teaching power skating. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've seen his skate. He's a brutal skater. And he can't That's shoot. Amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. What a quality chirp. Between Beat that it. and the Simon Cowell <laughs> chirp, but you with the... The deep V-neck the other night. I'm no, liking okay. this kid. We got to get him on. Oh no! Oh no! Look how pale that was. That was pa- do that again. That's no. pasty and pale. It, well, it's it's friggin' winter time. It makes, that puts us all on a diet. We don't want to eat. Can't look at that. All right, Brownie. Coach is blowing the whistle. Practice is over. Feel free to spend a little extra time working on some of your pod skills tonight, bud. So you're a little better tomorrow than you were tonight. He's gone. Some research. Oh, he's <laughs> gone. Investigative yeah, he closed it right up. <laughs> By the way, Struds, that was not journalism what you did. FYI, you just sort of went to check some. You did not do journalism in your looking into I Subway's did. mustard thing. Well, that was not a journalism you did. It's investigative journalism, right? It was That's not a did. journalism. I no. investigated while journaling. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the definition of journalism. Uh when we come back, Struds and I are gonna take a lap and then your comments in Ask Us Anything. Time to talk about your mortgage? It doesn't have to be a daunting conversation. With over 16 years in the industry, Maria Gallus with Maximal Mortgages knows how to make it easy. With access to dozens of different lenders, let Maria customize the perfect solution for you. Whether you're purchasing, refinancing or renewing or a first time buyer, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you feeling confident you're in great hands making informed decisions. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. I feel bad. Chris Rombos wanted me to ask Rob Brown if he used to chew back in his day in the NHL, and I, for- I forgot to mention it, so I'm just going to text him here real quick. Brownie, comma, Someone on the stream wants to know if you chewed during your days in the NHL, comma, let us know. Text sent. Chris, will try and get an answer for you. Time now for Taking a Lap, brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. And it's even better now. Backscape 2.0 is here. Check this beauty out. Engineered with a new friction fit handle, lets you effortlessly snap the shaver in and out. That means you can touch up the rest of your body too. The back, the head, the face, whatever you need. Go to backscape.com. Use the promo code GYB10 for 10% of the first order of an advanced or deluxe 2.0 kit. That's backscape.com. B-A-K-scape.com. Stay smooth, gentlemen. Strutty, let's take a lap, bud. Uh, GM meeting's going on right now. There's mm. a lot of talk on about refereeing all these different ideas but one idea that came out that i thought was interesting not the biggest one but uh giving the coaches or the refs an opportunity to review a puck over the glass and i i actually i don't like review i'm on the record saying i do not want any review now that we're out there this is one that we have seen time uh sometimes where it goes straight out and maybe someone misses it and or it uh, hits some stick and it goes out and we still get a penalty i actually saw there's a funny story teddy peckham theo peckham he shot out, it went through the camera glass on the side and went out and they called that as over the glass because they thought it went over. So I actually think this would be a good idea. According to the insiders, they, no one wanted that. I, they don't want to review that. 
but I think Chicago would be a good idea. Why wouldn't you want to review it? Like, make sure. Like, in the playoffs, game seven of a Stanley Cup final, you don't want the ability to make sure. I mean, sure, it gets mundane in game 62 of the regular season and the second time in one game, and people will piss and moan and complain, but you'd be damn glad that rule is in place in overtime in game seven of a Stanley Cup final. I agree. I agree, but it sounds like there's not much appetite uh, around this. So I don't we'll see that. what happens. See what happens. Um, I, I just the, the, the reviews are so long, and I, and I will leave this as my last thought on the reviews. I think they should have a time limit. Every review should have a five minute time limit, and whatever the goal, the call is on the ice, you have five minutes to review it. From the time that the ref puts the the old uh, headphones on there, you have five minutes to do it. Yeah, but what if there's trouble in the truck? What if the the replay crew yeah. can't can't get them what they need? What if? Well, you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, there's lots of what ifs, but I mean. But again, you know, Strud, Game Seven of Stanley Cup Final, and you're gonna what? Rush a decision? Yeah. Like I that's the sure, standard yeah. you have to apply to any rule changes you're thinking about. Not Game Two of the regular season, but you got to think about it in the worst moment possible, right. and because that's when the most spotlight will be on the rule, and people will say, "Did that make sense?" Right. No, that's fair. Why I mean, rush yeah. them? Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, speaking of Russian, hey yo, uh, hey. Alex Ovechkin, two goals tonight adds to his uh, total of two power play goals. Um, his his all time leading, but he's now at twenty one and twenty two. So the big man uh, rolling towards the end of the season here, you know, probably gets somewhere between twenty five and thirty. Gets him closer. I don't think he can make it next year for his uh, record breaking of Wayne, but probably the year after that. Uh, the great eight will get this done. That's barring injury. Yeah. Uh, another slow start. I don't know, man. How much, like how much does the organization do to just, can just figure out a way to make this happen and to just let it happen. And, and what, where is it on the priority list in the grand scheme of things? And, you know, making sure that there's, you know, regardless of where the organization might be at, there's the proper players around them in this pursuit. And um, it's, you know, it, it's a big deal and it should be treated like a big deal, but it, it seems, by the way, holy smokes, they're in the fight here. How unreal is that? That, that Washington's yeah. very much in the fight here, but uh, yeah, this has been a, 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 a lagging storyline because it was like, he's clearly going to do it. And then, oh, and now it looks like he's, uh, he's picking it up again. Yeah. I honestly, I think that he might be reinvigorated this summer to kind of maybe just get a little bit quicker. Uh, to me, he looks a little bit slow out there. <laughs> but is that not age, Judds? Like, can he go get quicker? Can he just turn back think, the clock, do something I different? I think there's a way. I think there's a way if you have to – I think there's a way for him to get a little bit quicker out there. So I think that – I would think a reinvigorated OV <laughs> to uh, – to have come out next September. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And and, uh, and watching Washington here is going to be fun. Kind of this lame limp to the finish in the East. Like, man, oh, man, yeah. who, want, who wants a playoff spot? Feel free to grab a playoff spot. Anybody that wants to. Detroit nosedived. And then well you know, the Islanders were messy. And it's it's crazy, man. Philadelphia right in there. Like, the, the East is weird. It is. Nobody wants it. Yeah, you would think. Uh, okay, that was Taking a Lap brought to you by our great friends over at Backscape. Quick message from Belvedere Golf and Country Club and then lots of great action on the stream. We're going to get to that as well. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvederegcc.com. All right, time for Ask Us Anything, brought to you by Match Eatery and Public House. If you've only got time for one before the game, make it a frosty 25-ouncer at Match Ice District. Enjoy these supersized steins on select beers. Match Eatery and Public House is located adjacent to Rogers Place in Grand Villa Casino. For more information, check out matchpub.com. Great place to hit if you want to get down early, beat the traffic, Find a parking spot. It's a great spot to land. Grab a brewski, grab some food, and then go check out all of the action. Zuby, hop on in here, my man. You got a big game tonight, buds. Tell Very important. You, like, you, yeah, what's going on in Beer League? We almost couldn't do this pod tonight because of Beer League. 
Very important 1015 start. That's where they put all the important games. Um, yeah, it's a battle of uh, our whole di- our div is wide open. I think we're playing. I, I don't want to call it guaranteed win night because then I'll have to come on here tomorrow and say that we didn't possibly. But I think we're, we're in the top bunch and these guys uh, are, are struggling. They're in the bottom group. But really, any, anyone could win it. So, yeah, big game tonight against the Colts, the Kelowna Colts. Ooh. If you were to guess at what your goals against the average is this season, what what would you say? I know. Well, I don't know what it is precisely, but I could find out. It's it's mid to high fours. Um, oh. My 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 save percentage, which I do kind of care more about, is is ticking up. I'm I'm pushing I'm pushing nine hundred. I'm 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 I've got oh, high wow. eights going, but um, but you know what <laughs> bugs me to no end in this league in the stats they. I, I get credited for um, empty net goals against. Those don't come out of my – so my goals against um, average is probably better. Start than, a petition. Yeah. Start a petition. Well, the guy who runs the league is on my team. <laughs> so it's like, oh, oh, it's like I have Gary Bettman on my team, but he still can't uh, get that out of the, the buggy system, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> it's all good. Stuffed. Not a very all right. Well, let's game. get uh, let's get five six minutes of ask us anything in, and then we'll get you off and running because I know you got to do your you got like a seventy minute pregame uh, calisthenics routine that you're routine. Have to get to. So, if five, I, three, five. If I, <laughs> that's what I should. If I were Strutty, I'd say it's coffee and darts minus the darts. I have a co- no matter no matter what time my game starts at, I have a co- I'll have a coffee tonight before the game at oh at nine forty five p.m. Oh, um, so there's uh, uh, quite a discussion going on about. A, a D man being out next year, which isn't necessarily going to happen for the Oilers, but discussion about who you think that would be if if they've got five guys under contract, uh, if if they extended Vinny and then Broberg trying to make a push as number seven and he'd be an RFA, but obviously the Oilers uh, have the best chance of re-signing him. So if if who do you think might end up being the odd man out this summer? for the Oilers on the back end. Assuming Vinny resigns, they have Broberg waiting there to take a spot on the left side. So I believe it'd be Kulak. Now that's not saying I want to get rid of him, but they need to find some cap spacing saving somewhere. Um, Cause they're looking at the Campbell situation, right? What's going to happen with Campbell. Maybe they bring Campbell back in and he becomes a backup. I, I don't know, but there are, they can't just keep throwing money at every problem because they keep running into money problems. Shogger. So here's the thing. We're going to say, we're both going to say Kulak right now. Let's let the playoffs happen. Because something tells me when the playoffs are done, we're going to be going, okay, they need that guy. And I think that guy wants to be here. And uh, he's a good playoff performer. He really is. So we can answer that question one way now. Might be an entirely different answer after the postseason. Kulak brings it. For sure he does. So it's going to be interesting to see. But fair question. And we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, going back quickly to Ovi, who you guys mentioned in the last segment, Gavis Concon says he's playing great. He should have had three on Skinner. And that's so true. And it's crazy to think about, you know, he's been hot lately. I mean, he could have easily had a hat trick that night. And then I think did those two tonight push him to 20 goals again. I was just listening to something. Uh, Yeah. He's either 21 or 22. I think maybe, I I think, geez, I mean, I think it's 20 for sure. 21. I missed the start of that. Zuby. Who was that? I'll check here. Oh, on Ovi. Ovi. On Ovi. Okay, yeah. I, I was just saying, Ovi, you know, uh, this fella said on the stream, Ovi could have had three on Skinner the other night. Easy, you know. Right. Yeah, he's 21 now. Sorry, my bad. 21. Go, 21. So he got 20 tonight. He had 19. So he got 20 and 21 yeah. tonight. Yeah, yeah that he gets those three on Skinner. All of a sudden, you're talking about maybe yeah. still a 30 goal season or, you know, he's pushing up. I just thought that was, it was crazy, those saves that Stu made on him all in one night. Yeah, Rashawn Nelson asks us here, did the guys watch Henrik on After Hours? Got choked up seeing his little girl, saying he gets emotional about his family. We forget the human side. Struddy, <laughs> do teams consider this? How much of a factor is that? We see sometimes guys are slow when they first arrive, and leaving the family behind for <laughs> a certain player is going to be tough. That's the job, man. That's the job. Um, if you don't want to leave your family, don't be a hockey player. So mm-hmm. I, I I get it. I I am I understand it. But you can be traded at any time, and that's that's the job. I remember my last year with the orders, my wife and I were infertility issues, and we applied to, for an adoption. And if I would have been traded, 
uh, all that would have gone to the side because now I'm not living and working where I said I was. So I, if I was traded and, and I would have just said, I'm not going and I would have quit right there, retired, bang. No kidding. Not that I was, not that I was probably that desirable player, but no, I had already made, it, major, I already, man. I made it in major. my mind. I was like, oh. I was just going to say, I'm out, I'm done. And this is why, and then just quit. And uh, because that was more important to me. Uh, so I'd already made up my mind, but what that is, that is the job. The yes. wives know it. The husbands know it. The families know it. Everyone is hard on the kids because they don't understand it, but that's the job. But Strud's at the same time. And I know it, you're not showing a lack of empathy for Henry. Cause I know, I know that's not what you're saying, yeah, right. but I guess, I guess for fans who maybe have been underwhelmed by him so far, um, you know, is that something that's fair to factor in that if a guy shows up on the scene, having left his family, young kids, all that, maybe there's some adjustment there that you can understand. Yeah, I, yeah to a point I can, I can, but I mean, again, that that's the job, man. He knew it. Yeah. He knew it. You heard that, you know, Sam Carrick said that, you know, he knew that Henry could talk openly about getting traded. So he had time to do it. And I don't want to sound mean or, 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 you know, no showing no heart, but that is the job. That is what we sign up for. When you become an HL player, you can be traded any moment, sent down, called up, extended, like cut. It's just, just the way it is. So you have to find a way to work through that. And it's hard. I get it. It is. I couldn't imagine. I didn't have kids when I was playing. Yeah. I could not imagine how hard it would be being away from them. But that is the job. You got to be a professional. And, and I, I, I think it, it hurts them, but I think he's professional enough to just, to just deal with it. Chris, Rob Brown did not chew. During his playing days, just got back to me on text. So most important piece of information yeah. we were waiting for tonight. He, yeah. he said never. Also, he someone instead. asked. What's that? <laughs> he smoked instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back a day. Someone asked about my nail. By the way, uh, noticed that I got a black nail there. Uh, was doing some renovating around the house. Struts, oh, pretty handy guy. Was using various <laughs> tools that I absolutely know the names of, and smashed my thumb. And oh so the it went black and it's it's been slowly growing out. So this, exactly. thank you for the concern. I think it was Rashog's hairline that was asking. Um, this exactly. is a result of my handy renovation skills yes. and my relentless effort at uh, improving my my skills. Did I you was take one or two nights off from the pod for that. <laughs> I showed up. I showed up. I take a lot I, more than that. I was super confused by the comment. He said, "Your th I didn't." He said, "Your thumbnail is black," and now I only think thumbnail in terms of what thumbnail I'm putting up oh, yeah, for the thumbnail. podcast and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now yeah. it's my construction wound, my construction in, <laughs> in injury. That looks like it was done with a marker to me. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> a couple more here, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, VA said uh, last Oilers versus Colorado game will be the last game of the regular season. So I doubt it'll have any bite. Do you agree with that? Or do you think those two teams, even if their playoff seeds are, are set in stone, do you think that's a game that those teams are still going to want to go out and win knowing they would only see each other again in a conference final? I think you want to show your best. I do. Um, you know, like, because you're gearing up for the playoffs, you're getting ready to go. Like, could, do you think 97 would turn it down because it's the last game of the year against that team? I, you know, and he, do you think McKinnon would be like, that's okay, guys, let's just go 50%. I, those two guys are so driven, su such passionate players. They set the tone for the rest of the group. <sighs> Matchups will probably be set. I know what you're saying, Struds. They'll have played this next game they'll go like it'll be go 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 this next game i disagree i think the last game of the year we're going to be talking about well you know what there was a little more high flying affair than we thought because there wasn't a lot of hitting guys are playing a little, little bit safe um i think that one will not be anywhere near what this last one and what this next one are going to be so i respectfully disagree i think everyone will understand the situation and the matchups will probably be set uh, Nathan Jameson saying, I want to see Holloway back in this lineup for the postseason. He could play at playoff pace, which the bottom six seems to yeah. be lacking. Could use him on the fourth line, eh, Strutty, pacing-wise? Yeah, he brings some speed for sure. Um, yeah, he probably gets a, a, a look there at some point, I'm guessing. I don't know if regular season, maybe in the playoffs. Um, but it's a deeper you know, lineup, man. It's a yeah, deeper lineup. It's tough to crack. Like Matthias Janmark's got to come out in order for him to get in there. Yeah, and him playing, I think, makes a big difference. Like I love that those two young guys are playing because I, I believe both of them are on the team next year. I know that Broberg's asked maybe to be moved on, but I think he's on the team next year. Yeah, a couple more Zuby. 
Um, Rusty Shackelford, uh, great name, says, uh, how much more ceiling does Vinny actually have? Has he reached it this year? I didn't think he was a top four D man and he's doing okay out there, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, the way he trained in the off season, again, on the ice, I'd love to see another win, a summer of that for him and what that looks like next year. Uh, only hundred games in the league. So, man, I, I think his ceiling is probably a four or five. And that's a lot considering he was at 1920, maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's still more room for him to improve his puck skills. I think that he's willing to put the work in. And when you're willing to put the work in, uh, yeah, I definitely think there's more room for him to get even better. And hundred games isn't a lot. A lot of times they say that you can't really judge a defenseman, you know, till he's 200 games in and Vinny's only halfway there. So I know he's a little bit older. But yeah, if he continues to put the work in the way he has so far, I do think there's even room for more improvement and he's going to get some playoff experience here. Um, yeah, I, I think there's definitely room. One more, Zuby, and then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, Greg DeFord, a new voice on the stream, says, what if Stetcher and Broberg are both here next year for small-ish contracts as your 5-6? Would that be a good enough for a third pairing? And I guess then the implication being there probably some other guys Kulak, are moving, yes. or some other guys are probably moving on to uh, free up some cap space. Kulak and CC gone on the back end. You got Broberg and Stetcher in struts. That's interesting. I mean, that would be major savings. Major cap savings. Um You'd be looking for a huge upgrade, but Broberg having, you know, huge steps, right? And then probably trading to fill someone for Sketcher's, Stetcher's spot uh, later on in the year. Yeah, upgrading that a little bit later on. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested. I, I think there is still a part for Stetcher to play in this. Let's see how much action he gets between now and the, the end of the regular season. Uh, and whether he can play himself into the conversation if it's a specific type of opponent, is he a better option than 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 CC? Can he play his way into that conversation? That's his job right now. Put a seed of doubt in the coaching staff's mind that he might be a better option against a specific type of opponent, and he will get an opportunity to keep rolling in that direction against the Montreal Canadiens. Time to wrap it up, Struddy. Time for our gem of the night, our favorite moment from the day. It can be anything from the pod. Uh, he normally likes to call his own number. I don't know if he has the gall to do it again tonight. Struts, what, what do you got, bud? Yeah, I think the moment of the day is when I brought up the 124 save uh, performance by Alexi Krushklev. Uh I'm not sure that's his name, but that's incredible. <laughs> I, I just, I just 124 saves, guys. I don't think we're acknowledging how incredible that is and losing one nothing <laughs> in quintuple overtime. Like I, I just. <laughs> I got to recognize that's greatness to me. Yeah. That is absolutely greatness. <laughs> that that was one of the better gems of the day. Because on these non-game nights, or one of the better relentless players, uh, on the non-game nights, it's a little bit tougher, and you need to put a little sure. bit of work to find one. And I, I will say, buddy, I was pretty impressed with that. So I don't mind you calling your own number on that one. Hey, Zuby, what you want to give him that one? Yeah. I, li I also like that he just made up a new overtime, Quintruple. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I want to make clear, it's not so much that I brought it up. It's just that that player did it. Like, I yeah. just so oh, okay. was doubling yeah. down on the relentless. Right. Like, it, it's yeah. crazy, man. 124 like saves. If you have 124 saves tonight, we'll bring you up tomorrow night. It's I th I'd love that. I think my – I've, I've yeah. had 50 at least once this season so far. Oh, but oh, uh, I love it. Now I count all the dump-ins from center too, of course. <laughs> Good luck tonight, buddy. You have Thanks, to text pal. us in the group chat and let us know. Yeah. We're totally going to be interested and we'll for sure totally. bring it up tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Great job, pal. Much appreciated. I think the gem of the night was Rob Brown peeling his sweater open like that and, oh, and displaying some of the most pale gray skin I've ever seen yeah. on, a, on what appears to be a healthy adult male. All the working he's been doing, putting into that body. <laughs> Uh, that'll, wrap up the, that'll wrap up the podcast big thanks to our title sponsor sure would be with gmc thanks to all of you for tuning in here on the live stream and if you've downloaded us and are listening in podcast form we really appreciate uh, you coming on this journey with us we're gonna do some awesome shows between now and the end of the regular season and then playoff pods i am fired up it's the best time of the year it's gonna be a blast so stay with us here on got your back have a fabulous finish tonight and a great uh day tomorrow We'll chat after the Oilers and Habs. Cheers.